1967 Corvette Coupe by Ravel Monogram. Coming up next on Monster Hobbies, What's in the Box? What's in the box? What's in the box? What's in this box? What's in the box? Hey everybody, welcome back down to another exciting unboxing at Monster Hobbies where today we are returning to the GM showroom and we are going to open up this great 1967 Corvette Coupe by Ravel Monogram. Hey, did I ever tell you guys that I'm actually trying to build the 50th year of Corvette with all 50 Corvettes of every year? Well, I'm trying to do that, and maybe one day when I start to build this one for that, you guys will be the first to see it, but you have to like, subscribe, and share this video with all your friends and family. Pound that notification bell, because every time I make a new video, you are going to be the first to see it. We'll be continuing with our unboxing series before I ever get a chance to build these, which will probably be in 2023. So enough of that. Without further ado, let's go down and see how they changed the Corvette for 1967. By 1967, the second generation Corvette had been refined in styling and performance to a car that would eventually be considered one of the best Corvettes ever built. The coupe was the ultimate expression of the Stingray design, and one look at this milestone car makes it obvious why. So we're going to take a look at our Revell Monogram 67 Corvette Coupe. It's a skill level 3 kit, and as you can tell by the photograph, this is a real Corvette and uh, it's got those great side vents which was new for 67 you carry over into later model years now one look at this box of course means that we got to tilt it up and take a look at the sides here and there's all our dimensions onto the kit length is seven inches it's got 124 pieces the body is molded in white the decals are water slide and then it says the 427 cubic inch engine with 390 horsepower, four barrel carburetor and standard exhaust system. That's what comes in the kit. You get the Corvette rally wheels, uh, decals included for factory stock appearance, molded in white, transparent red and clear with chrome plated parts and black vinyl tires. And then over here we get our painting guides. You need silver, flat red, engine orange, gloss black, flat black, satin black steel aluminum transparent red and gloss green to paint the model here's a nice rear three-quarter view of the model itself so zoom out a little bit here there you go of course the end of the box shows the built-up model kit just like the photograph and then as we can see this is the most challenging skill level three for ages 12 and up you need glue you need paint and uh, there's what the car will look like once you build it up. There we go. Got your engine and Chevy engine orange, the big 427 with the air cleaner. Does have the hood scoop bulge in here in the hood. There's very many of these different types of hoods for Corvettes throughout the years. This one, of course, being one of the final hoods for this body style. So let's just bring this back over here and zoom out a little <laughs> technical talk and we'll remove the lid on this amazing kit just so you get an idea of the parts now here we have our instruction sheet which we will review in a few minutes the decal sheet some chrome bits and then of course all our white components bagged up which we'll be opening the bag in a few minutes. Then our glass, the tire sitting on it. Luckily that didn't melt the plastic, like in some of the other reviews I have. And our wheels. So let's move this out of the way and take a look at our instructions. And now here's our famous instruction sheet. Now here's a little bit of interest. Bought July 12, 2003 at John's Hobbies for $15. John's Hobbies is the hobby shop that Monster Hobbies actually bought out and took over. And this was bought just the year before that actually happened. Because I, we opened up our store in, what was it, June or July 4th, 2004. 
So, there's a bit of cool Monster Hobbies history for you. It says the 67 Corvette was the fifth and final year for a body style that started in 1963. So this, this kit, of course, or car actually, has all the refinements and um, lessons learned in making a better sports car from the actual 1963. Because in 63 it had the split window, it had a smaller engine and all that kind of stuff. And then the 67, of course, being the final year, had the best of it all. So the instruction sheet here folds out into the larger panels. We just move that over there. Of course, it has the paint guide and the phone number, which I don't know if that still applies anymore. Anyway, copyright 1997. So this kit has been around for quite a good history. Uh, there. Okay, so come back in. So in our first panel here, we have the amazing 427 cubic inch motor. And of course, the the engine block is in two pieces with the standard transmission in behind. We've got our cylinder heads and valve covers going on there. The exhaust manifold, oil filter, oil pan, alternator, fan belt, fan. The fan clutch goes on there, which is a chrome piece. We've got our water pump and, of course, the other cylinder head and everything. The right side, left side. Moving on down. Here we've got our engine going together. You got your special distributor here because of course they had a fiberglass body so you needed a grounding type distributor. Uh, carburetor, intake manifold going on there. And then over here we've got our starter motor and the fuel pump. And our air cleaner with the air cleaner decal going on there. And the little 427 decal going on the side of your valve cover, so no real uh, custom features to this kit, or custom variation to this kit. However, it does have very nice stock components. Our rear axle assembly here, going onto our differential cover, and then you glue on the rear leaf springs, which has the sort of Model T style spring in there. And then here's our chassis with the transmission cross member, the differential going in, your shock absorbers, and your exhaust pipes. Tells you which order to put it in. So first you're going to drop down your differential, second you glue on your pipes, and third you put in the cross member. And then we've got this panel over here which is showing our upper A arms going in with the battery and the steering box onto the chassis. The completed engine dropping into the chassis as as well as our drive shaft here. And then our fenders are separate, the inner fenders right and left. Getting into page three, you can see our firewall going on to the body or the interior tub as well as the brake cylinder and the cylinder back for our master cylinder. Then you've got your a decal going in here on the center console as well as parking brake and your gear shift. The interior going together, your seats. It's got separate door panels and a rear deck panel. And then we get this beautiful look at our, our dashboard here. We got our brake and clutch pedals going in with the steering column and the steering wheel and another decal on the horn. Dropping into place. Then we get back under the hood here for our radiator which comes in three pieces. You got a fan shroud, the radiator and the radiator wall. The lower radiator hose here hooks up to the engine. You're going to need your tweezers to get around there to put it in in the front there. And then you got your washer bottle your upper radiator hose going in the top. Then we finish our suspension here with the lower piece of the front suspension. Then our coils, tie rod, and steering linkage going onto that chassis. Quite a lot of steps to this. There's our glass going into the body and you even get a roof light in there. Completed interior dropping in. 
Then it says, note, use tape to hold hood in place until after step E. So, of course, that's going to be when the chassis goes in. There's a couple little bumps in those fenders, which will lock into the pins on your hood. And there's your wheels going together, wheels and tires, body. And then you've got chrome rocker panels that go on the sides. And then your exhaust pipes going into the back. There's your front grille going together with the bumpers and the license plate and our turn signals and clear lenses. Separate clear lenses in those turn signals, so they're going to be tiny. Then we've got our body with the gas cap, the taillight housings, the bumperettes, or the bumpers, yeah, bumperettes, the red lenses in the back, and then back up under the body again for some bumper supports. Then we've got individually molded windshield wipers, door handles, side view mirror and a decal for a license plate and then onto the back we have this nice side profile of the car showing us where all the decals go there's even the center decal for the wheels and then here we have a hood stripe combination because there is a blue white and a black stripe in here so you get for example, tuxedo black, you would have a, what is this, black, uh, oh, so if your car is black, in the tuxedo black exterior, well, hang on, the interior trim color, okay, so the exterior color is tuxedo black, it would have a red interior, red, oh, Black, red, bright blue. Yeah. <laughs> okay, hood stripe colors are in here. So, basically, this shows you all that. <laughs> all right. I won't be late up the end of the point. So there's our instruction sheet. And now, let's take a look at the body. Here we have our prototypical Corvette 1967 body, molded in white plastic. And it is quite a nice little body. There's really no flash going on in it. You can see the the nice vents right in here. This was the first year for these style events. They would be coming back up again in later Corvette models. They've got some nice little pins here for mounting your bumper on. Of course, whoa, there you go. Nice big front grille with the typical Corvette Stingray flip-up headlights, which was popular for this model. You get your cross-flagged emblems right on there. Very crisp detail. I do believe this kit came out at a time when all the big manufacturers were competing to make good quality models, just like Tamiya, or Tamiya of Japan does. For 67, of course, we don't have the split window. That got dropped for the 64 model year. Then you've got the great big fuel tank door right there and then your Corvette emblems on the back. Kind of hard to see under the bright lights and white plastic. There's a little bit of a mess right here on the the rear fender. You get some minor seam lines coming along this kit. But very 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 well molded. You can easily sand that down with a bit of sandpaper. You got your door latches in here. Your mounting point for the door latch. And of course the keys for your door. Back in the day without remote starters or door locks. This year also had a rear tail lamp going on in here. Or a backup light. Or something. <laughs> the bumper bracket mounts for bumperettes. And of course all the holes for the exhaust pipes and our rear tail lamps. So again, a very nice, clean, crisp little body. And here's our sprue tree coming up next that has the hood in it. And unfortunately, I can't pop this out right now to put it in the body to test the fit. So I'm just going to have to hope that it fits nicely. You can see there's a lot of flash on this parts tree, but it doesn't seem to have affected the parts very much. We've got our battery here, our front timing chain cover and water pump, as well as the exhaust pipes, the radiator hoses upper and lower, our valve covers, our cylinder heads, the oil pan, the seat backs, the sun visors, 
the door panels, which are, it's, it's nice to have these as separate pieces. Washer bottle, then you've got your brake master cylinder back here. We got our springs, the engine block in two halves with this wonderful transmission going on here. Oil filter, a fan shroud, and the fan. So let's just bring this up to the camera and take a look at some of the detail going on here. Start with our door panels, and as you can see with these being separate, you get the nice crisp detail on the GM door winders, or window winders, and the the uh, door latches, or door handles. Anyway, there's our engine block. You can see the frost plugs in there, as well as the transmission, which is beautiful. The linkage on the side here, too. Then we get our nice fan detail and the fan shroud. Cylinder heads and all that. There's our oil pan. The battery is nice, it even has the correct Delco written on there. So, flipping it over, you got your trunk mat in here. There are some sink marks under that hood, but again, nothing that couldn't be corrected with the proper hobby knife, which would be a number 16 blade. Good for scraping. Not too much under there that's a difficulty. So there's that component. Let's take a look at the other parts trees. Now here's our next parts tree that includes the interior tub and flash again. Must have been a bad uh, year for squishing this through the mold. But again, like I said, the flash doesn't really affect the parts. It's just right in here in these runners. So there's our rear differential, the mounts and the spring the shock absorbers, the differential cover, the brace, there's our upper and lower A-arm, front suspension assembly, we've got the other end of our steering, the steering box, the linkages, the firewall, bracket braces for the bumper, the exhaust manifolds, the radiator and rad support, starter motor, pedals for floor pedals, and then the interior here, and let's just bring the interior bucket up to the camera, flipping it over. There's that nice center console sitting in there. You've got the proper trunk with the drops in here and everything. And then the door panel there, as we've seen before. So even though this is sort of a partial bucket, partial interior panel sidewalls, this should come up looking quite nice once you get it all together couple of bumps on here. I don't know if that's supposed to be like that. And then a little bit of flash around the edges, but of course you can clean that up with your hobby blade. Coming across, you can see the nice detail in all these other components. Very nice, clean, and crisp. Your firewall, of course your A-arms and all that. And then there's a manufacturer's logo. Copyright 1994. Five or Vel monogram, all rights reserved. So again, another great sprue tree. Our next sprue tree has, of course, our chassis, the dashboard, the front seats, the fenders, and the back panel for our interior. And as you can see from this, you get some very nice detail in here. Just look at the underneath of this chassis. Some really, really crisp bits and pieces. Then of course our dashboard with the correct instrument panels and the little glove box in there. There we go. Front seats have some very nice detail, very crisp again. Looks like the real thing, only smaller. Let's just turn this over. A couple of mold marks in here in those fenders, which of course could be easily removed with a bit of sandpaper on your finger. Ha, you expect me to say the number 16 hobby blade. Interior underneath looks pretty good. Looks like everything would fit in. A couple of mold marks. Then, of course, we have our front suspension bits here. There's a mold mark under there, which should be kind of corrected before you drop the oil pan on top of it. And that is that sprue. And here's our final white parts tree with the exhaust pipes, the four wheels, the steering wheel, the steering column, the belts and pulleys, and our drive shaft. So finally, 
as our last view you can see if I turn the wheels over just how nice all these parts are again very good detail from Ravel monogram and now that completes our white parts yeah. here's my favorite of all the model kit parts trees and that is of course the chrome parts tree and we get two in here see which is really nice I love the chrome <laughs> anyway so as you can see there's a lot of things going on here you got your rear tail lights then what's over here all our door latch handles and rear view mirror there's the gas cap for the back here's our wheels here air cleaner the windshield frame the uh, rear bumper our side rocker panels and chrome the bumperettes master cylinder uh, license plate oh maybe those are the door latches there kind of looking at this from a far angle so you have to forgive me there there's some rocker panels here the our grill our uh, intake manifold the carburetor the license plate shroud and our rear exhaust pipes of course there's our alternator as well windshield wipers in here so let's just bring this up to the lens maybe I can see what these little things are over here and there of course we have nice chrome wheels the air cleaner yeah little detail parts I'll just call them up there <laughs> there's our bumpers and of course our windshield windshield also has a little notch there for rear view mirror and of course our uh, what do you call them the uh, sun visors yeah basically quite a lot of nice detail going on here uh, let's bring the other parts tree over you can see the nice egg crate grill in there which is I do believe another first for this year which of course was the last of this year's grills but the Egg Creek Grill, you could use that uh, nice black wash there. The Citadel Nuln Oil. Get in there and wipe it off the top and leave your chrome. And the alternators. So once again, some very, very nice chrome components for your model car. Next up, we have our glass components. And there's our front windshield and rear glass. There's our backup light, and we also get these side vent windows. I do believe that's a different backup light. There's our four rear red taillights as well, and a big letter B. Uh, one thing, when I was looking at the chrome there, they had that chrome windshield frame. Ravel also had a 67 Corvette convertible in this series as well so that chrome frame would fit this windshield um, for the convertible this windshield of course also fits our hardtop and here's our tires for the model kit and one thing that I find interesting is unlike AMT Ertl that brought out brand new Firestone wide oval supreme tires and that sort of thing Ravel instead opted just for their generic tires and these tires go all the way back. I have them in a 1960 Corvette kit. They're plain. They're generic. They only have this little side, um, of course, our tread in here. And that's it. There's nothing to them. So enjoy. Last but not least is our decal sheet. And here we have four choices of stripes. So you get black, red, white, and light blue. You get a USA number one license plate as well as a vintage California TSN 662 and a modern California 67 390 horsepower license plates. So you can choose which one goes in where. There's our cross flag Corvette decals, which would be like air cleaner and that sort of thing. Then we have our red lines that you can put on those tires, to make them not so generic as well as the little center decals which would go on those nice wheels you do have decals for your instruments panels here and a bunch of other cool things your scripts and those cross flags that are on the hood and on the rear 
And that completes our look at the Ravel Monogram 1967 Corvette Coupe. And wasn't that a fantastic unboxing? It sure will be a great model kit sitting on my shelf once I get it painted white with that red interior. Should be a really, a really cool. That'll happen probably around 2023, 2024, 2025. I don't know. How long will it take me to build it? Well, if you want to know, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this channel. Pound that notification bell so when I start building this thing, you will be one of the first to know about it. But you'll be one of the first to know when I upload the next unboxing video from 1967. So until next week, enjoy your sports car.